Sony will not be at E3 this year. This is a shocking story for some people. Uh, or if you consider the fact that Sony didn't go to E3 last year, it might not be as shocking to some of you. They obviously have PSX they hold every single year. Uh, they did a special like launch event uh, or a reveal event for PlayStation 4 uh, way back in, I believe, 2013. Or, or, or what, yeah, 2013, I believe it was. Uh, and then uh, they obviously have state of plays and all this stuff going on as well to reveal game announcements and all that jazz. This is in addition to just, hey, we can just drop things on social media as well. Nintendo does this too with Nintendo Directs and all that. But Nintendo still attends E3. But I think um, there is a grand discussion here, obviously, of, you know, is, is E3 dying? How quickly is it dying? Will it be around? But what's interesting this time around in Sony dipping out of E3 and not participating in it, is we get details on why they're not participating in E3. That goes beyond just, hey, look, we want to host our own events. Actually, it seems that there is an internal conflict uh, between Sony, EA, and, and other companies that are part of this event, presumably Microsoft, Nintendo, 2K, whatever, uh, over what they want E3 to be. And until that conflict is resolved... Um, Sony doesn't really want to participate and let's just get into it because th it's interesting because it doesn't sound like Sony might never come back to E3, but it sounds like until E3 figures out it's crap, um, Sony doesn't really want to be part of it. And this is in addition to the fact that, you know, last year thousands of media members had all their information leaked. Uh, so I mean, it's not like the ESA is, is exactly sitting in, in, in good water. But let's read this. It was originally reported by GameIndustry.biz. So here we are. Uh, PlayStation will miss E3 for a second year in a row. Uh, the firm told GameIndustry.biz it does not feel the vision for the event is right for what it has planned this year. Instead, it will attend hundreds of consumer events to showcase upcoming games for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. After thorough evaluation, SIE has decided not to participate at E3 2020, said a Sony Interactive Entertainment spokesperson. We have great respect for the ESA as an organization, but we do not feel the vision of E3 2020 is the right venue for what we are focused on this year. We will build upon our global event strategy in 2020 by participating in hundreds of consumer events across the globe. Our focus is on making sure fans feel part of the PlayStation family and have access to play their favorite content. We have a fantastic lineup of titles coming to PlayStation 4. With the upcoming launch of PlayStation 5, we are truly looking forward to a year of celebration with our fans. PlayStation has used E3 as a place to unveil details of its next consoles since the very beginning, attending the first E3 in 1995 to detail the U.S. launch of the original PlayStation. The company's success at E3 2013 was viewed as a major moment in the build-up to PlayStation 4, which resulted in Sony reclaiming its market leadership from Xbox, including announcing a lower price tag and obviously, hey, this is how you share games remember uh, yeah anyways that's that's a flashback there however e3 organizer esa has struggled to satisfy all of its members who have been split over what they want the show to be some publishers such as ea and sony want to see e3 become a fan celebration of games whereas others would rather the event remain an industry-focused affair. The ESA has tried to satisfy go both groups by introducing some consumer elements to E3, but with limited success. Um, I find this interesting uh, that we, we have that particular detail that, that Sony's like EA. Um, I don't know. Uh, you guys probably are aware. EA does their own thing during E3. They do an event called EA Play. It is a fan event. Um, as someone who has attended EA Play last year, I can tell you right now, I think it's a poorly ran fan event. I think there's some good elements to it. I think the actual show they put on that you can watch on live stream is great. Greg Miller uh, from Kind of Funny Games was, was like one of the hosts last year. Uh, they've had Andrea Renee and all this stuff that, you know, the people that I respect in this industry and I, I think make for good hosts. And I think they did a fairly good job on the actual show that you could watch online. Or if you're obviously at EA Play in person, you can sit in the crowd and watch as well. But. The actual event, it, it's kind of weird. Um, they had like a meet and greet that you could do with like YouTube and streamer celebrities that was really, um, I, it just really felt out of place. It had nothing to really do with EA. And some of those streamers they had on weren't even ones that were playing EA games really. So it was just a, a, a strange thing to see. Obviously some fans were really into it. 
Uh, but not all the fans, you know, got to do the meet and greet with the with, with their their favorite celebrity because there's just too many fans. The event's too packed. Um, they had the Star Wars Fallen Jedi like backroom demo that you could watch. Uh, but again, you had to wait in line for like six, seven hours to even get a chance to watch it. Um, and, and, and even then, like they didn't have playable demos for everything. Like, you know, the Switch version of FIFA uh, wasn't there. Um, and, and even some of the demo lines were just super long. And uh, it's like the whole event existed to have food stands and sell, sell food because that's basically what you could do. Um, you basically got to go to EA Play and choose to do one thing at the whole event. Otherwise, you can eat and leave. Um, you can get free swag. EA hands out a bunch of swag. And there are lots of people that are all about that swag life. But um, as an event, it's really not that good. Um, it, makes e it, it makes E3 look phenomenal in comparison. E3 is much better managed uh, with much more to do than EA Play. But I think it's interesting that Sony... Uh, who has their own fan event technically with PSX is kind of in that same boat with EA where they want E3 to be a fan event more so than an industry event. So what E3 has traditionally been uh, and been for a long time uh, is an industry event where media gets together, media, press, um, you know, game developers all get together in one space uh, to get exclusive in looks at all these different video games and different platforms and new hardware. Uh, and it's really a nice hype cycle. But uh, as social media and the internet has exploded over the years, uh, these kind of industry inclusive things are less and less needed. You have uh, people like me on the internet here making videos and talking about this stuff that don't necessarily need um to be an industry insider to have influence and affect sales and sony knows that ea knows that and that's why they like to have you know more public events where um anyone can basically come in even if it costs money anyone can come in and enjoy and i think one thing uh that that the esa is struggling with because they want to satisfy ea they want to satisfy um sony they want these companies to be part of e3 i think they're, they're struggling with the fact that there is a lot of pushback from other companies, probably companies like Nintendo, probably companies like 2K and, and Activision and, and, and Bethesda or whatever that prefer it to be more of an industry thing because that's what it's always been. And uh, they prefer to keep their demos really tight and all that. You know, if the demo's broken, they don't want like a, a fan playing it. They'd rather be a media member that has understanding that games are in an unfinished state. Um, versus, you know, a fan experience is going to go on Twitter and just blast them because the demo broke or something. Um, and and it, it's, you know, the problem is, is the ESA is trying to please both crowds, and you can't. Um, you have to basically go one way or another. They either need to open it up and completely make it a public event, or they need to make it, you know, just whittle it back down to an industry event because Sony... Uh, was part of it when it was just an industry event. And ever since they've tried to please both crowds, Sony's now dipped out. So will Sony come back if it's industry only? Maybe. Will Sony come back if it's opened up the fans? Maybe. But what they don't like, uh, or at least what Sony seems to be voicing they don't like, is the idea that they're trying to do both in one. And it's kind of a mixed messaging, and Sony doesn't want to be part of that mixed message. Uh, and that sucks for video game fans who look forward to the E3 press conferences and all that. Because Sony is one of the major players, and to not have them do at least a press conference, it'd be cool if they, like, they skipped out on E3 the event but still did an E3 press conference. But that's just not happening. Um, Sony's going to do their own events uh, again, and the PlayStation 5 will be just fine. They, they don't need E3 to, to have a successful launch. Um, What's interesting, of course, is uh, the, there was an update on this because the ESA responded and said, um, an ESA spokesperson said, E3 is a signature event celebrating the video game industry and showcasing the people, brands, and innovations redefining entertainment lo loved by billions of people around the world. E3 2020 will be an exciting, high-energy show featuring new experiences, partners, exhibitor spaces, activations, um, and programming that will entertain new and veteran attendees alike. Exhibitor interest in our new activation is gaining the attention of brands that view E3 as a key opportunity to connect with video game fans worldwide. So you can even tell that they're trying, they're starting to think of it more as a fan event. Um, I think one of the big holdups of the being a fan event is one, it's two hundred and fifty dollars to buy a ticket to enter E3, um, and like they're doing this weird thing with like the first day or two is like exclusive to media now, and then like the last day is. Or I think it's just the first day is exclusive to the media. The last two days are fully open to the public. Um, it's just weird. 
it's just a weird thing they're doing. Like, it's so weird that I'm not even sure that I want to go to E3 this year. And that's so, saying someone where Nintendo is a big part of this channel and where our E3 videos, by the way, get the most coverage, get the most views. My hands-on gameplay uh, get tens, 20, 30,000 plus views of these games. So it's very advantageous for me to go to E3. But, eh. I guess it's a... Uh, if my interest is dwindling on E3, I have to wonder what your guys' interest is. Now, um, Phil Spencer was quick to come out and confirm that Xbox will be at E3 2020. Not too surprising since they, they don't... Uh, here's the thing. Microsoft is part of E3, uh, but they're not really part of E3. They do everything in their own Microsoft theater, which is where they also do um, their, press, their press conference. But they literally put the entirety of their events in there which is a completely separate venue from the la convention center and since it's separate and it's a little bit of a walk not a long walk but it's a little bit of a walk from the convention center it's kind of like microsoft just running their own private event at the same time e3 is and maybe that's something sony could look into running maybe their own private event at the same time e3 is so it's still kind of part of e3 but then doing its own thing and they just happen to let people with e3 passes in um like microsoft does but i it's weird what Microsoft, because because again, ever since Microsoft moved moved their booth out of the convention center into their own theater, uh, which by the way, their own theater set up for the booth is terrible. It's horrible. It's horrendous. I hate it. I wish that they would go back to being inside the convention center because not only because it'd be nice to fill the space with Microsoft, but I don't like their setup at all. It's like no effort. They put basically no. It's just a bunch of TVs with games. There's no. Um, you know, magical setup. There's no magic to it. Like when you go to Nintendo's booth, it feels kind of magical. You go to like 2K or, or or WB or whatever. Like it feels magical. You go to Microsoft Theater, and it's literally just a stage with a bunch of TVs on it. It, it it's not magical. It's just bland and boring and confusing too. Like there's not really any explanations of where lines are starting. It's just it's just a mess. I don't like what Microsoft does there. But they are going to be part of E3. And the biggest thing I guess is obviously that means we will get um an E3 press conference probably all about the Xbox Series X. It's going to happen. And that's exciting because we do have a new hardware uh generation launching and at least for one company during E3 they will be using it as a way to really really you know grab all the attention because sony will likely not have an event happening the week of e3 uh they will likely choose their own time so they can dominate all the headlines uh, it'll be interesting to see obviously i think xbox series x and playstation 5 will both have reveal events before e3 uh and then i'm curious uh when playstation is going to have a second event for that you know if they're going to wait till psx i don't know how long they're going to wait uh to talk about playstation 5 after the reveal event but i i don't know it, it's I, I'm worried about E3 in general. I, I'm obviously worried that it's not going to survive uh, for long. However, I, I've been talking to some other uh, media members that have been attending E3 for basically the entire duration of its existence, or pretty close to it, 10 plus years at least. Um, and a lot of them think E3 is not going anywhere. E3 is going to be around for a while. Uh, E3 has a chance to convince Sony and EA to come back. Uh, they have a chance to turn things around. The, the, the issue the ESA is having isn't their relationships are tarnished with these companies. It's that they are trying so desperately to please everyone that no one actually ends up satisfied. Um, and they, they need to basically fully commit one way or the other instead of trying to do this hodgepodge to please both crowds. They either need to make it an industry event, have it be an industry event, and just leave it as an industry event that lets fans in through the media, or they need to open it up and make it a full-on fan convention like PAX, you know, like Gamescom, like all the other major uh, events out there that of uh, things, you know, you know the, the, the one thing that takes, like Tokyo Game Show that takes place in um, Japan as well. So, like, they either need to go full-blown, it's all about the fans, or they need to go full-blown, it's all about the insiders and the industry people. Um, and right now they're dancing a fine line that isn't working. And as someone who uh, has attended E3 as media and with fan tickets, I can tell you right now as media, it's incredibly frustrating to try to do media stuff in the midst of you know thousands and thousands and thousands of fans that, that make things take longer than they should. And as a fan, it's frustrating 
uh, to have some of your time taken away to attend because the media get their own times and times and their own days. So, like, it's frustrating for everyone. There isn't really anyone who's honestly satisfied by it, except, obviously, you know, everyone can be satisfied by press conferences. That's, like, the press conferences are, are, are things that I think um, shouldn't really go... Like, so, like, here's the thing. Sony can hate what E3 is as, is as an event. They can disagree with what, how it's... Because, remember, E3 is a convention. So, they can hate the convention. But they... I don't know, like, they, I feel like they still should show up as, like, a, a, as a press conference or whatever you want to call it. It's not really a press conference, but not in the traditional sense, but whatever, that's what we call it, E3 press conferences. I mean, even Nintendo, who dipped out of doing live press conferences, still does, like, a digital event, a, a Nintendo Direct, you know, thing at a set time, and it's basically a press conference without the live crowd. I'm... Um, I hope that the ESA can figure it out because E3 to me is a pillar in this industry. It has a place, but it needs to decide what its place is. It needs to decide if it's going to be an industry only thing and be kind of smaller or if it's going to just explode in popularity and be this big giant event like Gamescom. And in this case, E3 is going to have to get more more venue space than just the convention center. They're going to have to start running out you know, entire blocks or, or, or areas, um, you know, around E3 even more so than they already do, uh, and, and really just explode this thing, uh, into something that is just a big celebration of gaming. They keep talking about like it's a celebration of gaming, but they're not really fully committed to it being that way. And I think if they did that, um, you would see Sony who does do things at Gamescom come back. You would see EA maybe give up on the whole EA Play thing and actually come back and be part of, of E3 on the whole. Um, Microsoft, I think, is probably not going to leave their own theater because it's just cheaper for them to do it the way they're doing. But uh, they obviously believe in supporting E3. And if you expand things out around the convention center, it's just going to make the Microsoft Theater thing feel like a more natural part of the experience. So, I don't know. That's just my my, my two cents on this. I'm curious what you guys think. Are you disappointed that Sony's not going to be there? Do you not even care because you just care about what Nintendo or Microsoft is doing? PC gaming show is still part of E3 as well. Uh, so, that's a thing. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm a little bummed. Because I was hoping for one last major E3 press conference battle of next-gen systems between Sony and Microsoft. I was so hoping uh, to see that. But uh, it's still going to be a battle. It's just going to be not about who won E3 with their next-gen systems. Well, we say that. Maybe Nintendo will have something to say about that. We could talk about Series X and Series S or whatever versus you know, Switch Pro or Switch 2. I don't know. Um, maybe that's a more of a pipe dream than, than reality. Anyways, you guys let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. I am Nate Jantz. Um, again, not sure if I'm attending E3 this year. Uh, maybe there's better time I could put elsewhere. Doesn't mean that I won't be covering E3. Um, I don't know. Why don't you guys let me down in the, go down in the comments below, too, if you, if you think I should attend E3 this year, if you've seen my coverage in the past um, when we were at Nintendo Prime, and if you think it's worth... Uh, getting that coverage because Nintendo is still going to be there, Microsoft still going to be there, etc. Um, there's still going to be plenty of games to play. Uh, but do you think I should be there focusing on those games or should I move on uh, and just do coverage from home? Anyways, I think that's it. I am Nate Chance. Be sure to like this video, comment down below, subscribe for more, hit that bell icon for notifications, and I'll catch you in the next video.